In this video we're going to take a look at how to configure the Cisco Firepower next generation IPS inline set interface mode. So as we normally do with the start of these videos is we take a look at the notes of the main points that I have in relation to what we're covering today, the topic that we're covering, before we get into the demonstration lab. So the main points I have for inline sets are as follows. So the interface mode is inherited from the original firepower. So before the acquisition, um, this interface mode was a firepower interface mode, so it didn't come across from the ASA. Inline interface sets allow for blocking of traffic, so when you configure inline sets, you still have the ability to block traffic that is flowing through the device. Now inline sets essentially bind the interfaces together, so for those that watch the transparent BVI uh, interface configuration, you are pretty much doing the same here. Um, but you're configuring inline sets. You cannot modify the physical interface configuration when an inline set is configured. Um, you can, however, modify things such as the duplex and speed, uh, enable and disable interface, um, and you can also configure security, security zones if required. An advanced interface mode does exist, now that's called inline tap, now we're not going to focus on that aspect today, we're going to cover that in part 2 of this video series. Configuring inline sets is pretty straightforward once you've got your uh, next generation IPS stood up. I've put step 1 configure interface names. Now I always find it's best to make sure your interfaces are configured with with names just so they so that they're easily identifiable. And then configure the interface set itself. So when you configure the interface set you are adding uh, an interface pair to essentially that set. For the demonstration today we are using the same topology as the previous one in my videos. What we have is a transparent firewall running here and we're going to configure GIG00 and GIG01 as an inline set. We also have VPC4 towards the left hand side and that's in the 192.168.10.0 slash 24 subnet and we have VPC5 which is in the 192.168.20.0 slash 24 subnet. Now we will be using these VPCs to send traffic through the uh, next generation IPS uh, so that we can demonstrate that traffic can still be blocked uh, with inline sets as well. So For the demonstration We'll head over to our FTD now, or our FMC. And to configure the inline sets, we go to device or devices, device management. Now they said device manager then. And just before we configure the uh, inline sets, we need to select the relevant device where you want to carry out the configuration. If you have multiple different FTDs, make sure you select the right one. Let me just expand these fields a little bit more so that they're visible. Let's flip back that logical one there. And then pull that one out. Okay, so we're about there now. Okay. 
So we can see that we have the diagnostics which is bound to the management and then we have the gig 00, zero which is named outside we have gig 01 which is named inside so gig 00 and gig 01 they're the two interfaces that will become part of an inline set so we now click inline sets and as you can see we have none currently created so what we're going to do is we're going to click add inline set and then we'll be asked to give this a name so we'll call this inline one for the purpose of the demonstration and as you can see we have available interface pairs already set out below so we can see that we've got the two that I mentioned so gig zero zero and gig zero one so outside to inside or inside to outside so what we need to do is we add that uh, those interfaces into the selected interface pair once we've done that, advanced features we will not be going through today. We will focus on that in the next video. So we'll just go ahead and we'll press OK. And you get an interface mode change warning. So when you add the interfaces to an inline set, any existing security zone mappings will be removed. Interfaces can be assigned to only one inline security zone. So we want to proceed with that, we're okay with that. And then what we'll do is we'll save that. Now just before we deploy that, we can see that the inline set is, uh, is now displayed below. But if we go back to our interfaces and we take a look at these interfaces, we can see now, as I said in the presentation, we can't modify the name. We can add a description if we want to. We cannot change the mode. So inline mode is um, is what's being configured, so we can't change that. And we can add a security zone if we want to, but interface IDs, MTUs cannot be changed. We can also change the duplex and speed if we want to. Okay, so just before I deploy the, the changes, let's have a look at the access control policy in place because what we need to do is we need to demonstrate that traffic can still be dropped uh, in line. So currently configured, we have a uh, permit any any with login enabled, but this is currently disabled, so this is irrelevant. And then our default action, we actually have access control block all traffic. And this little scroll-like um, image on the right-hand side of that is our login ability. So if I click on that, you can see that we have login enabled. Login's enabled for the beginning of the connection because uh, you can't log at an end of, end of a denied connection and we send the logs to the event viewer so that's all well and good so what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and we'll deploy that so our inline set has been configured so that's the main part of the uh, video demonstration today and now what we're going to look at is we're going to look at how uh, traffic can still be dropped in line That policy is just deploying now. So our policy has been deployed now to our next gen IPS. So what we'll do now is we'll test the traffic flow from VPC4 on the left hand side to VPC5 on the right hand side and vice versa. Technically, that traffic should be dropped because we have a uh, default action which is block all traffic. So starting from VPC4, we're going to try and we're going to ping 192.168.20.10 which is VPC5. And what we'll do is we'll send a UDP packet. And as you can see there, it's timing out. 
which is expected. So what we'll do is we'll flick now to the event viewer and already it's uh, reloaded so we can see there on the event viewer that we have 192.168.10.10 so from VPC4 going to VPC5 we can see that UDP source and we can see that it's um, the action is block just below that as well we also have OSPF running in the environment and you can see here that anything that's not explicitly allowed including uh, multicast is blocked so you can see that you've got OSPF packets here which are currently being blocked as well likewise we will just try and attempt to ping from VPC5 to VPC4 which is 10.10 .10. we'll just send a normal ICMP packet to uh, VPC4 and as you can see it's timing out again and now if we focus back at the uh, connection events we can see that they're from 192.168.20.10 to 10.10 .10. we can see the echo request we can see that the action has been blocked so uh, that proves that we can block with the next gen IPS we can block in line uh, if, if we want to so just as a last test what we'll do is we'll enable this permit any any so we'll just simply enable that just to show that we can now have packets passing through the next gen IPS so I've saved that I'll deploy the policy or the change now that will start to deploy again and then we will do the same test and we should see that those uh, connection requests or ICMP events are successful So again, that policy is now being deployed. So we'll perform the same tests, starting with VPC4. Let's try send uh, TCP request. So you can see, in fact, that's sending normal ICMP, but you can see that that is going through as it should do. And we can also try it with, if I get the right code, which is free, TCP. So you can see there that it's successful. And what we'll do as well at the same time, before we check the connection events, is we'll do the same from VPC5. So you can see again there that the um, attempts are successful. So we'll quickly reload, oh, it's going to actually refresh itself now, the connection events and we should be able to see those accepted or allowed flaws. So there we go. So there we go, we can see the uh, TCP flaw from 192.168.10.10 .10 and vice versa, we can also see um, that from 20.10 so that is essentially how you configure inline sets and we also did a little bit extra in this video demonstration today showing you that you can block traffic in line as well our next video will focus on the inline tap which works slightly different so if you are interested in following along with these videos in this CCIE uh, security playlist please do subscribe hit the notifications bell so that you stay up to date with all the new videos that I post I am fairly active posting these videos so do keep a lookout for them and if you got any questions 
please feel free to reach out to me on any of my social media platforms or leave a comment in the video below. I've left you with some useful links here. These links will also be in the video description. So if you're interested in finding out a little bit more about what we've gone over today, please go ahead and check out those links. Until next time, guys, thank you for watching.